It is all as I have foreseen. Soon, this rebellion will be crushed. Star Wars Empire at War was first mentioned in 2004 by President of LucasArts Jim Ward. In the four halls, be with you. He discussed the possibility of a real-time strategy video game set in the Star Wars universe. Ward described the game as taking the real-time strategy genre in a new direction and outlined plans to balance the gameplay between hardcore gamers and audiences familiar with the Star Wars franchise. In January 2005, LucasArts officially unveiled the game with a release date set for the end of the same year. The newly formed developer Petroglyph Games would develop the game, running on an original 3D game engine. On July 15, 2005, LucasArts changed the release date to February 17, 2006. Set between Episode 3 and 4, the game focuses on the struggles between the Empire and the Rebels. In the Rebel campaign, the Rebel Alliance attacks a shipyard at Kuat, introducing the player to basic space combat before infiltrating the planet of Wayland on a basic ground combat mission. Oh dear, this humidity will certainly not be good for my circuits. The campaign explores how the X-Wing fighter is pressed into the service of the Rebel Alliance, the liberation of Kashyyyk, the first whisperings of a brand new Imperial superweapon, and ultimately the Battle of Yavin. The Imperial Campaign features Darth Vader and his search for the Rebel Alliance, intercut with missions to help complete construction of the Death Star. But when the plans for the Death Star fall into enemy hands, the player has to seek out the traitor who has passed the plans to the Rebels, intercept Princess Leia and use the Death Star to crush the Alliance once and for all. Empire War offers three ways to play. The storyline campaign follows a semi-open linear path where the given side must complete a number of mission objectives. Campaign missions build up the plot of Star Wars and eventually the Battle of Yavin. Galactic Conquest is the sandbox campaign in which the player controls either the Rebel Alliance or the Empire. Each faction has at least one or three broad objectives for Galactic Conquest, which vary depending on which scenario is being played. Kill the enemy leader, protect or destroy the Death Star, or completely wipe the other faction from the map. The player receives funds from planets they control and from mining facilities. These are used to research technology, build better defenses and vehicles, or train new troops. Each planet has different advantages to its owner, even though some bonuses are specific to a faction. While the player stumbles upon the enemy, only the equipment they brought to the battle can be used. Battles can take place on a planet or in space. Land battles are fought with infantry and ground vehicle units, while space battles are fought with starfighter squadrons and large spacecraft. Whoever controls the planet's surface controls the planet itself. Construction complete. Construction complete. Ready to go. In production. Inbound! The skirmish mode brings battles in any shape or size the player wants against a computer or other online players. Everyone, retreat to hyperspace. Let's get out of here before the Empire brings in the big guns. In every mode, player can use specific heroes to help defeat the other faction. Each hero is a single, moderately powerful unit with special abilities. Right. 
Fire and War was well received by fans and many considered it the best Star Wars RTS ever made. In May 2014, online functionality, including network multiplayer and wireless chat, was discontinued. As of September 2017, the multiplayer has been re-enabled on the Steam version, as well as workshop support being added.